what you guys got another video here for you now the other day i built this computer with the 4650g uh, installed on it which is the apu which has built-in graphics and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the benchmarks and also some of the gameplay so you can get an idea of what you can expect if you're building something like this in 2021 because we all know that gpus are virtually impossible to get your hands on so if you get your hands on something like this then you will be able to play uh, games. I get a lot of comments, people saying that you can't play games on this and it's simply not true. So I've got myself uh, some 4400 megahertz RAM installed on this system. Now we're going to overclock the GPU just a little, just to give it a bit of a better chance to be able to handle games. It's completely safe to do, as you'll see with all the benchmarks and testing that I do on this system. So you can see down here, GPU boost, I'm gonna put this onto extreme mode. And this will take it from a 1900 megahertz clock speed to 2300 megahertz clock speed. So that's what we're going to set this to on here. So let's go ahead and get that set. And I will then boot up the system and we can do some tests. So you can generally see what you can expect from a PC of this caliber in 2021. So let's start the ball rolling uh, with Heaven Benchmark. You can see... Uh, the frames per second here, maximum frames per second, 64.9. And also we have a score of 1,514 for Heaven Benchmark. So you can see here we have got HW Info and I've also got GPU-C open here. And you can see just idle temps for this particular build that I did. If you was interested, it's pretty good. We're getting around about 32C um, under idle. And when we put the benchmarks on this, it doesn't go more than uh, 63 to 65 Celsius when we run Cinebench, which is pretty good. Now, this APU is a pretty good offering uh, from AMD. And a lot of people will probably tell you that you can't game without a graphics card. And that's simply not true. And we'll take a look a little bit later on in the video. You can see here we're running Cinebench uh, release uh, 2.0. We'll take a look at that and see what sort of uh, benchmark scores we can get with Cinebench. And I'll also run 2.3 as well, the latest version. You can see we've got a score there of 3,560, which outperforms a Ryzen 7 1700X, which is pretty decent. Let's go ahead and run the other benchmark here so you can see the latest benchmarks here for the uh, newest Cinebench. So I'll just run the one test here. and We've got uh, the 9,102 points, which is pretty decent uh, for this particular type of uh, APU here. Let's go ahead and take a look at some games. We'll take a look at Grand Theft Auto 5 here. You can see the uh, graphics look okay, pretty good. This is 1920 by 1080, and the game is completely playable, as you can see here. There's no problems at all. Now, of course, we do have some of the settings uh, turned down, and that's because, obviously, this is an APU. There is no uh, standalone uh, GPU in here. It's all built onto the actual chip itself. And this is the actual gameplay now. We're playing the game rather than uh, playing the story mode. Here you can see the gameplay is pretty good. And it, you're getting a good steady frame rate here. And I've turned some of the settings up and put uh, Virtual Sync on uh, to stop any sort of tearing. But again, very smooth and pretty good. Let's move on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Another pretty tough game to play. But I wanted to see whether this uh, actual APU can handle uh, this particular game and you can see here you're getting a good uh, 30 frames per second 28 to 30 up there and pretty much a console level sort of uh, graphics really and gameplay so it is playable as you can see here there's no stuttering and no drop frames we're getting a nice smooth uh, gameplay here so for those people to say you can't play games on this apu and you'll be sadly mistaken to see that we are actually playing this game and it's pretty smooth and, uh, and enjoyable. You're getting sort of console level frame rates and it goes from in the 30s to uh, the low 40s and it goes up and down. So depending on what part of the game you're in and what's around you, but it is playable and we're playing at 1920 by 1080. And again, you could always tweak this a little bit more and get a few more frames out of it by making a few more minor tweaks. I'm just sort of going through here and just seeing what we can get with these particular games. So you can get an idea of what to expect if you buy this sort of APU and uh, you want to try these games. Now CSGO 
I haven't played this for many years, but you can see here, um, if you've got these sort of settings on here with anti-aliasing on and high settings and all these sort of things, you should get a good uh, solid frame rate. And we'll try two lots of settings here. We'll turn all this off and turn it down and uh, we'll see what frame rates we can get. So let's have a look at this sort of gameplay here and what to expect with this game with these settings. And you can see we've got these set to high, uh, some of these. So we'll give it a go and we'll take a look at what sort of frame rates we're going to get. Now, as long as you're getting over 60 frames per second with these high settings, then you should have an enjoyable experience with first person shooters. You need at least a minimum of 60 at 1920 by 1080. And you can see here it's going into the 70s and hundreds as well. Uh, and then going back down into the 90s. So it just sort of fluctuates, but still very, very good, uh, smooth gameplay here. And that's at the eye settings. So if you wanted to turn this down, we'll go back into the settings here and I'm going to turn some of these features off like uh, shadow quality, very low, and also turn off some of the other features here, which is like uh, shader detail. I've got that on low now. I've left uh, some of them like effect detail on high. And uh, again, you can spend more time messing around with this, but we'll turn off anti-aliasing and a bunch of other bits and pieces here and leave some of these ones enabled and uh, we'll see what that goes like here so let's apply these changes and then we can go ahead and uh, continue so we'll save those and uh, we'll have a quick run around to see what sort of frame rates we can get here uh, with those settings as long as it doesn't affect the game itself and it doesn't look really bad we're running at 1920 by 1080 here and this is silky smooth gameplay here. And this is totally playable, well over 130 odd uh, frames per second here, very steady, which means if you was uh, playing this competitively, uh, you could easily play this game, no problem at all at these settings. And uh, you should be okay. Now you can tweak this to your own needs, but I think as long as you're getting over a good steady 60 frames per second, you should be able to play first person shooters, no problem at all. And we're getting way over. 100 odd here which is very good indeed as you can see here so pretty impressed with csgo and it should be able to play something like this because this is quite an old game and uh, it's pretty easy to play with a lot of these apus so as you can see for people saying you can't play games uh, you can and we're going to have a look at the witcher here we've got this set at medium settings at the moment 1920 by 1080 gameplay and we'll see what sort of frames we can get here with this particular graphic intensive game so let's go ahead and see what we get here so we're in the 30s here so let's get on the horse here and uh, we'll have a little ride around and see so we'll go riding down here on the horse to see what sort of frames we're getting here so we're getting around the 30 mark which is still playable we'll get the odd drop frame there i see but it's still playable for an APU, it's not too bad. And I'm pretty sure that if we tweak this a little bit more, we'd be able to get a few more frames. Again, this is sort of console level frame rates, really. And we're playing at medium settings, 1920 by 1080. And uh, again, if you haven't got a PC and you haven't got a lot of money and you can't get your hands on a GPU, then something like this is still uh, doable. And again, once uh, GPU prices come down, you'll be able to drop a GPU straight into this machine. So that's the idea of these systems right now. And let's go back into the settings here. And we're going to lower these down now. We're going to take these down from medium to uh, low. And this is shadow quality, terrain, water, and uh, other stuff like that. We're going to turn this down. And again, you can tweak this uh, a little bit more here to your own liking, but we're just giving it a test here to see uh, what we can expect here. I'm not going to go down to 720p. I'm just going to keep it at 1080p here. And hopefully this gives us a good steady 30 plus frames, which means it's not going below 30, which would then be uh, way playable uh, than dropping down below 30. So let's go ahead. So we're in the tavern here. We're getting over 40 odd here. And that's gone down to 35. And around that sort of mark. So you can see here, it's getting very steady now. And there's no dropping below that 30 mark which is um, ideal for something like this so yes totally playable so that's the witcher and i didn't think it would be able to play that to be honest uh, but it managed it okay 
let's go ahead and try another game we'll try valorant this time because valorant is a well played game at the moment we're going to settings here and uh, these are the settings it's got set here and then we'll give this a go and you can see here valorant is already so easy to play on it's so smooth and we're getting over 140 frames per second here which is pretty good for a first person shooter and uh, again this is completely playable so if you're looking for something to play valorant and you haven't got a lot of money i haven't even got a chance to get anyone shot yet and i was getting shot in the back there but yeah that's uh valorant there just a quick look at it and i will take a quick look at rocket league here and again that's getting 40 odd frames per second and that's all on high high quality as you can see here 1080p gaming which isn't too shabby and uh, it's handling that with no problems whatsoever so for those people who say you can't play games with this apu then you're mistaken you can and it's quite an enjoyable experience so if you haven't got a lot of money to spend and you can get your hands on one of these chips and you do want to play some games like these then this system right here will be able to do it now if you're wondering uh, where the build video is for this machine it was the video i did yesterday for some reason a lot of people didn't watch it i'm not sure why they don't seem to watch the build videos but it's there if you want to watch it uh, so just check that out if you want to see the build video of this pc right here and for those people that were concerned saying that that cooler is too big for this case and the glass panel doesn't go on it does fit it works fine there's a good gap there. there's a good 10 15 mil gap between the cooler and the glass anyway with that said as you can see hope this video helps you out if you're looking to build something like this you can do it and it will play games my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk big shout out to all my youtube members who join my youtube members group i really do appreciate the support and i shall see you again for another video real soon